morning, welcome to everybody. We are going to have the opening ceremony, which is a very informal ceremony, <laughs> let's say. So just a few words to say hi, uh, to, to introduce the conference. Uh, so here in um, I can I would like to, to say hi to Philip, Eric, and uh, Jesus. And uh, uh, really here, uh, our dean, Jorge Clemente, has a familiar problem because one of his, ch his children have a kind of health issue. So he asked me to say hi to you and, and so uh, a few words just to welcome. Uh, first is to say thank you to Tatiana, all the team, and for uh, Common Ground team. I never met you before, <laughs> so I've been involved in the organization of this uh, meeting, and it's great to share with you these days. So it's kind of hard work, but Tati with Tatiana, it, everything is easier. <laughs> so good. thank you so much. And uh, thank you to Choose uh, Madrid and Universidad Complutense, because for us. Um, and then thank you for, I, I would like to uh, say to you that the last days for Madrid, this rain is, uh, not this rain, but the rain we have uh, during the weekend w was really Mm, amazing let's let use this word <laughs> and then we have problem with facilities in the university so uh, 24 hours uh, we have problem with electricity and so but now everything is okay if we have problems we have we are plenty of room because <laughs> we have no students <laughs> during these days so if you have problems in your room we can try to figure out something and um uh, our School of Communication is uh, one of the oldest in, the, in Spain, so we, we are a very, uh, let's say, traditional School of Communication. So, and, uh, uh, and we are here in one of the oldest university in Spain. We are 500 years old university. We have different, I mean, the, we have different uh, steps in our history, but and and is a very big university. We we have uh, more or less three thousand teachers and maybe sixty thousand students and so. So you're in a, I think a beautiful area. There's a big campus. We have uh, at least three universities in campus and near campus. We, we have another universities. So probably it's a good opportunity, particularly for the Latinos, but for everybody to, to try to share with colleagues around. And this is a very well uh, moment because we are just beginning. And um, I, I just a few words about the topic. I think uh, we, we have been discussing about the topic, maybe with you too. And uh, I think it's uh, quite interesting to talk about trust, uh, intelli artificial intelligence and uh, truth, digitalization, and so on. So, so we have, uh, I mean, to be honest, I think it's a quite difficult uh, issue, but probably is mm, it's even an epistemological issue <laughs> or even philosophical issue, uh, the trust or the trusting. So I think uh, we can have very beautiful days discussing about that. You are, of course, inviting to, to, to go to other rooms and I think the that's my view but the most interesting things in this kind of meetings uh, sometimes is in the in the coffee room in the <laughs> street or in a, even at night walking in Madrid and so on so so enjoy and work and uh, finally, uh, Madrid, I think, is a very friendly place to work and to enjoy. So it's, um, I think, n city center and campus area and so, and we have, uh, now we have a bus for free during these three days. Uh, I have no any, uh, <laughs> I have done anything about that, but <laughs> This is a coincidence. So buses in Madrid are for free during these three days, not in the weekend, and uh, but subway you have to pay. 
Uh, so it's a very friendly city. And, uh, and then, um, and, and here, just, uh, we have a good bookstore uh, in the other building. We have two buildings. This is what we call Aulario, or new building. And the old building is the other gray building. Uh, so there we have a bookstore with uh, all kind of books in Spanish uh, and some in English. But I think it's one of the best bookstores about media studies, communication, sociology of communication, and so on. So, and um, and just to introduce myself because we were talking about that. And my work is uh, as vice dean, but I'm working in sociology of communication. And uh, right now I'm the board of sociology of communication of the International Sociological Association. So I, ha I have now the opportunity to say hi to everybody, but if you can share about our this other institution, which is the International Sociological Association, uh, for me will be a pleasure. So thank you work and enjoy <laughs> maybe this is the, the 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 key thing and then uh jesus flores with is the co-chair uh, just a few words in spanish uh, to say bienvenidos uh, estoy encantado creo que todos los que habláis español podéis seguir las palabras en inglés pero gracias por estar aquí y espero que todos los que ahora que no nos entienden los de inglés eh, sed eh, buenos anfitriones, amables y cordiales como siempre y demostrad que la Complutense tiene una centenaria tradición de acogida y de calidad. Gracias, Jesús, cuando quieras. Eh, tengo este orden, pero puedo dar a Filip. ¿Prefieres Filip? Sí. Sí. Me dice Jesús uh, que hable Philip primero. So, Philip. <laughs> you want Philip or Eric? You. Uh, Eric. 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 Okay. Yeah. <laughs> this is quite informal, as you can see. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, just a few words of welcome. Um, I'm Eric Friedman. I'm uh, one of the uh, network chairs of the Communication and Media Studies Research Network. Uh, I Perhaps I'm the U.S. representative, um, but I don't know what that means in this uh, climate. <laughs> I don't represent U.S. politics, but I do represent um, the institutions that are affiliated with the conference. Um, it's a pleasure to have you here on what is a really rich and vibrant uh, topic. I know the network is, is uh, engaging with artificial intelligence. Uh, in more than one uh, forum, as are many associations. I think even though this is a very uh, rich and historic, as you put it, old institution, uh, we clearly are aware that uh, AI is impacting even the most historic of our institutions. Uh, not only is it rippling across uh, higher education um, and uh, forcing us to deal with uh, many changes, both in our curriculum, our students, how they engage, our faculty, how we teach, uh, but also across our disciplines and across our industries. Uh, my goal across these conversations over the next few days is to think about not just um, uh, ethical and responsible uses of AI, uh, but I think something that we're also deeply engaged with as um, intellectuals and academics, um, the importance of um, algorithmic accountability and um, uh, in, in sort of advanced technological literacies. What, it, what does it mean to teach uh, AI literacy? What does it mean to be uh, digitally literate in an age of, uh, of a neural, neurally networked society? So those are my goals for the conference, and I'm happy to engage with uh, all of you on any of those fronts, and I look forward to a productive dialogue uh, over these three days. So, um, bienvenidos. <laughs> Thank you so much. Uh, Jesus, you want to talk now? Okay. Maybe you can use the other one. Oh, yeah. No, you, you don't need to do nothing. Just speak. Okay. <laughs> uh, good morning. Uh, buenos días a todos. Bienvenidos a este congreso, a este octavo congreso internacional de estudios sobre medios de comunicación que organiza la red de investigación sobre estudios de medios de comunicación, Common Ground, conjuntamente con la Facultad de Ciencias de la Información de la Universidad Complutense de Madrid. Eh, brevemente, solo voy a hacer hincapié en el tema central del congreso. ¿En quién confiar? Ética y comunicación responsable de la inteligencia artificial en los cibermedios. En los tiempos de creación de contenidos mediante algoritmos, 
la ética, la transparencia, la educación, la regulación y, sobre todo, la comunicación responsable debe constituirse en pilares para la generación de confianza de la inteligencia artificial. Por ello, me vais a permitir hacer una breve referencia sobre la iniciativa que algunos investigadores y ponentes presentes en este Congreso hemos venido en llamar el Manifiesto Madrid sobre ética de la inteligencia artificial para la educación y la comunicación. En la vida tememos lo que no entendemos, por lo que para evitar que la inteligencia artificial sea lo peor que ha sucedido en la historia de la humanidad, es momento ahora de entender más para así temer menos. Hawking 2010. El primer paso para afrontar nuestros miedos es aprender, aprender en este caso con la tecnología que convivimos, con la aspiración de entender mejor el mundo y por tanto poder tomar decisiones informadas al respecto. Oliver 2020. La ética, regulación y transparencia deben ser los ejes sobre la que se sustente el nuevo orden mundial de la información, el nuevo orden mundial de la inteligencia artificial para beneficio de la sociedad. Esta es una propuesta del Centro de Ética y Transparencia de la Inteligencia Artificial para la Educación y Comunicación, en donde se establece un decálogo de principios. Podéis acceder a la página del Congreso y sumarse a esta iniciativa. Muchas gracias. Thank you. So, as you know, the Congress is in both languages, <laughs> Spanish and English, and uh, so uh, thank you. Uh, and um, he talked about the manifiesto, who is in the web in the website. So maybe if you are interested in, you can uh, talk with uh, Professor Flores. Uh, last but not least. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> well, it could be late. <laughs> <laughs> so please, um, uh, yeah, Eric. <laughs> Philip. Philip. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Whatever. It's okay. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, morning everybody. <laughs> Good morning. Well, it's uh, <laughs> wonderful to see you all here on this uh, wet but happy day in Madrid. Uh, I think somebody said something about the rain in Spain once. <laughs> um, okay, so uh, it's really exciting. Rainy, rainy day in Madrid is yeah. just two hours. So you yeah, have yeah. two hours of sunny. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Well, that's a very rainy. <laughs> yeah, that, um, yeah, so it's uh, really exciting to be here in Computenza. Uh, these conferences, as you know, take years of planning, uh, and uh, this has been a long conversation. We are very happy to be in the home of our Spanish Language Research Network Chair, so uh, I thank you again for all the work that you have done to get us here today. Uh, I, I think there's no, important, no more important topic than to think about AI today, you know, a, as it transforms um, how we think, how we engage our institutions, uh, and I'm really excited uh, by the program that we have this year, those who are working in the AI space, but those who are in a more general communication um, space, uh, it's really uh, wonderful to see you all here. I'm just going to talk uh, briefly about some of the things that we're trying to do here at this research network and make you aware of the opportunities that are available to you. One of the things that we did during the pandemic was um, we have our own software team. Um, you know, one of the things that we, do, that we do, which makes us a little bit different, is not only do we think about communication studies, but we build tools <laughs> for scholarly communication uh, as a kind of communication type. Um, and uh, what we did is we, uh, we went back and we rebuilt our event application in the CG Scholar platform. It's why you don't see a printed program. Uh, other than the environmental disaster that printed programs are. Um, one of the things that we're trying to do is rethink the kind of time and space of what an academic conference is. So uh, we're thinking of it like an archive or a time capsule in a certain way, but something that is alive as well. 
So what you'll see is that everyone who's a presenter uh, has a presentation page. Uh, the online delegates would upload in digital content. So there's video, PowerPoint, all that kind of uh, stuff. You can see that in the third asynchronous tab. But we also encourage you to upload your presentation, whether you have done it before the conference, where you do it after the conference. And then this is a resource that you can come back to. So rather than the conference just being these two or three days, it's a um, collection uh, of presentations that you can return to. The other thing is if you don't see content that you want, there's a little request <laughs> uh, content button, and so that person will um, receive that request uh, and, and hopefully upload that uh, um, content as well. There are online discussion boards, which we really encourage you to use. Um, uh, and so, you know, that, that was the kind of shift that we made in the online space. Uh, in the in-person space, we have kind of reaffirmed commitments that we already had. You know, one is to uh, having a conference in English and Spanish. So it's uh, wonderful to have presentations where people can speak in their native language. Uh, you can toggle between those two uh, um, uh, programs that are there. Uh, one of the things that we also uh, wanted to do was make sure that we just weren't in these conference rooms, that we found those conversations in different kinds of spaces. Uh, and one of the things that we have uh, is our case study day. So on the third day, um, we, uh, we, we're, we're all going together um, to the Copitenza Art Center to see the museum. There is a campus museum here, which we will be guided through. Um, and uh, that's an important part of the uh, program, which we would like um, your participation in, if you can do that as well. Um, the Research Network is not just a conference. Uh, we have a, a journal and a book series. Uh, one of the things that we're trying to do with the journal uh, is take seriously the peer of peer review. Uh, we love our editor, we love our editorial board, but what we really want is the validation for what happens in this research network to come from members itself. So um, uh, if you want to be a volunteer peer reviewer, please uh, um, tell us, but uh, we encourage you to submit your paper to the journal. The other thing that we do is we give you access to that journal as part of your conference registration. Um, you can sign into the bookstore and uh, all the past content um, that is in there you can get access to. Uh, same goes with the book series. Um, um, you can get uh, access to electronic uh, copies um, of all the books we have published. Uh, I also want to talk about um, a session format which may be unfamiliar to you. Uh, after the plenary session this morning, uh, we have a session type called a talking circle, uh, and the talking circles are based on the themes of the conference. Um, what I ask you to do is just f select one of those rooms that best fits your research area, and just go in and introduce yourself, uh, say where you've come from, um, what your research area is. It's a really nice way for us to get to know each other um, uh, because so many of us uh, are unfamiliar. The final group of people that I want to recognize are our Emerging Scholar awardees. Uh, could they please stand up for one second? Could they? Don't be shy now. And we'll give them a round of applause. <laughs> So every year we have an application, thank you, uh, um, process for these emerging scholars. One of the things that's very important for us is, is to have emerging voices at the front of the room. So uh, they'll be chairing the sessions, uh, um, guiding conversation. Um, so be kind to them and they will be kind to you. <laughs> so um, uh, thank you again. I think that's it for me. Uh, I just really want to um, thank you again for all being here. Um, it's wonderful to see familiar faces. It's wonderful to see new faces. Uh, thank you to our hosts. And um, I'll now hand it over uh, to our chair, and we can take it from there. OK, thank you. <laughs> so um, probably we, we are really on time. So it's 9.26, what is great. We're early. Even Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> To be in Madrid, that's really great. <laughs> <laughs> so, we we can uh, maybe we can give the floors to the first plenary session. Yeah. So, thank you so much.
Yep. Or you can dance. Okay. He's a man with soul. I see what you mean. Good morning for our everyone. I'm, I'm going to introduce uh, uh, to Francisco Jose Garcia Peñalbo. He's a full professor in the Department of Computer Science and Automation at the University of Salamanca with four six year periods of research, one six year period of transferring and innovation, and five five year periods of recognized teaching. He received the Gloria Begay Award for Teaching Excellence in 2019. He was also a distinguished professor of the School of Humanities and Education at the Tecnológico de Monterrey, Mexico, and is a researcher of international impact at the Universidad Nacional San Agustín, Arequipa, Peru. Since 2006, he is the head of research group recognized by USAL Real, a group that is consolidated in research unit of the Junta de Castilla y León government, included in the University of the Stanford World Top 2% Scientist List 2019-2020-2021, he has supervised 29 PhD theses, and he has been Vice Dean of Innovation and New Technologies of the Faculty of Science of the USAL between 2004 and 2007, and the Director of Technological Innovation of, the uni of this university between 2007 and 2009. He is currently the Dep Deputy Director of the Research Institute for the Educational Science, Director Delegate for Digital Learning and Teaching at the Coordinator of the Doctorate Program in Education in the Knowledge Society of USAL, at USAL. He is Editor-in-Chief of the Journals Education in the Knowledge Society and Journal of the Information Technology, Technology Research, and an associate, associate Editor of many journals with a special mention in the journals, i.e. Transaction of Learning Technologies, Computer in Human Behavior, and Computer in Human Behavior Reports. He has published more than 100 research papers in this year index journal. So thank you so much for coming. And thank you for the, for the presentation. Buenos dias a todos. Good morning to everyone. It's a pleasure to be here. And I want to thank uh, the invitation to be here uh, for the uh, organization of this, uh, of this conference. I received this, uh, this invitation, I think, more than a year ago. And uh, the topic was uh, artificial intelligence. Then, uh, one year ago, more or less, you think, well, we, we can talk about ethics, uh, we can talk about what's happening in the, in the world uh, that, is, uh, that has many threats, uh, many um, uh, fears about artificial intelligence. But uh, I think as it happens in the, in the society, uh, more or less at the, uh, at the end of, of the last year, all change. Something happens and we, we change in every domain and also in the society, our perception of what is artificial intelligence. Now, then is, uh, we have a new scenario uh, that is related with a new kind of uh, artificial intelligence that is called uh, generative artificial intelligence. Uh, then I think this uh, we are uh, living a very challenged moment in, in from the technological point of view, but also from the others' uh, perspectives, because I think uh, that uh, any domain uh, in business, in society, is affected by this new kind of disruption technology. Then, oh, no. It's at the end of the presentation, then the presentation is over. We can go to the coffee. <laughs> then we have a, a social perception of what is artificial intelligence. Then this perception has to two moments, before November 30 of the last year. Then the society uh, used uh, uh, different kinds of artificial intelligence uh, instruments, devices, software, 
Uh, we have a lot of instruments, devices in our homes. Uh, we use uh, soft intelligence application in our mobiles, in perhaps many kind of applications that we use every day. Perhaps we have uh, we are surprised or we have worried about some artificial intelligence uh, applications such as the fakes because are very surpressive and you say uh, the president of the USA talking about uh, something strange uh, but it's like a, well, something that is, is amazing or frightening but it's, it's okay. There, there was too many discussions about the future of artificial intelligence issues in jobs, education, ethics, and we receive influence of the artificial intelligence co collective uh, imagination from films, uh, from books, from uh, SD fiction. Then there was a means about soft smart application, devices, and perfection of perhaps future, future problems. But after November 30 of the last year, artificial intelligence uh, start, started to be perceived as a reality in every domain. We view, uh, uh, we receive uh, many, many, many intelligent applications that continually appear in every domain. We perceive potential benefits that coexist with the with the first. We we have and we have discussions about current problems or artificial intelligence because it's not a future; it's here, and these issues are related with jobs, education, ethics, and so on. Perhaps we have much more misunderstanding about what artificial intelligence is. Because before, perhaps, people don't know uh, too much about artificial intelligence, but it doesn't matter. But now it's here, and I'm, I don't understand this, how this uh, is like a black box, uh, like a black box, something like that. Then, if we have influence before about artificial collective imagination, we have first, due to this artificial intelligent uh, collective imagination, because we also receive a lot of information that uh, the, 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 world, the, the world is over because artificial intelligence so this is the, 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 the real of what happened in this uh, date. And what happened really in, on 30 November of 2022? The answer is ChatGPT. ChatGPT started at November, uh, 30 November of 2022. We have, uh, after that, several release of this, this application. But the, the real change is we have a very simple application, a chatbot, that is able to generate tests as a response of our user request expressed in natural language made through a very, 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 very simple interface. I have not to know too much about artificial intelligence, computer science, so I only have, I need to have a browser and write in my own language. And I receive a response like it's very difficult to differentiate if the response is by a machine or a human. This is amazing from the computer science, but it's so frightening for the society. And in Spanish, uh, we will say, la gente echó las campanas al vuelo. In English, it's like, uh, uh, shouting from the top of the houses because this is uh, uh, we receive many voices to say this is amazing this is a new area this is like a terminator field 
This is uh, the first step to artificial general intelligence or the super intelligence. Many, many stupid things. But this is because we, this was the first time we have the opportunity to interact with a very, very simple interface with a very, very powerful machine. Just in order to try uh, and introduce or trying to, to put the, the concept very clear, the, the, the first idea is what really is uh, artificial intelligence? And artificial intelligence is very complicated to, 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 to define because there is no one artificial intelligence. There are many artificial intelligence. Perhaps if we uh, go to the the father, one of the fathers of the artificial intelligence, uh, we can define it like is the science and engineering of making intelligent machine, especially intelligent computer programs. It is related to the similar tasks of using computers to understand human intelligence, but artificial intelligence does not have to confine itself to methods that are bi biologically observable. One of the many possible definitions of artificial intelligence. And it's so clear now. We have science, uh, we have engineering to make intelligent machines or intelligent applications. And there are too many types of artificial intelligence. Artificial intelligence has a broad scope, enables machines to, to mimic the human cognition, for example, learning. But also we can talk about machine learning. Machine learning is a subset of artificial intelligence that allows machines, uh, machines to learn from, uh, from samples using uh, statistics, uh, using uh, different approaches. And it needs uh, less uh, computing power, but more human intervention. Or for example, we have another uh, very known uh, term is deep learning that is a subset of machine learning that use neural, neural networks and need, need more power to the for the calculations, but less uh, human intervention. And we have more. We can talk about uh, artificial vision. We can talk about uh, generative uh, contents. We can talk about um, robotics. We can talk about natural language processing. There are many, many types of artificial intelligence. Then when we talk artificial intelligence is the cause of the problems, no. Artificial intelligence is a broad area with many, many branches. And one thing is so important than is uh, when we, uh, we talk with colleagues from other disciplines, uh, teachers at the universities, uh, that discover artificial intelligence for first time uh, using this kind of, of tools, uh, perhaps they receive from the, this uh, collective uh, imagination that this kind of tools are so intelligent because they can understand and reasoning and uh, it's like the, the, the figures that we have in, in our mind because we see in the movies that are like a, a partner with reasoning capabilities. And it's not true right now. The terms uh, like artificial intelligence or machine learning are very uh, misunderstanding because it, it is like the, the, the machines learn like, like us. No, in this, we, we have to, to know or we have to, to transfer and, and trying to, to convince our colleagues that Learning in this in this context it means the ability to recognize patterns. Then we have to train these models. We have to train this kind of uh, of application just in order to recognize patterns to have a statistic, statistically probability to give a very uh, secure or trust response to our uh, needs. But. On this date, it's true, we, uh, we receive, or we have a, a disruption in the artificial intelligence. 
when a disruptive moment could be defined when a digital product or service outperforms the same product or service in terms of efficiency uh, or cost. And this uh, disruptive area of artificial intelligence was generative art artificial intelligence. That is very powerful because this kind of, uh, or the, or the bra this branch of, the, of artificial intelligence aims to generate digital content. We then, we automatically, automatically create, generate new contents. And this is a very, very important issue because the generation, the creation, the creativity till now was a human skill. And now we have machines that are able to make something similar that uh, similar or indistinguishable, indistinguishable uh, elements of the human creations. We have, uh, we had uh, examples in images, but in the, in the case of test, test generation, perhaps was the, 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 the most amazing approach to, to that. A uh, more precise uh, definition of this uh, artificial, uh, this branch of the artificial intelligence, that is the, the, the generative artificial intelligence, is the production of previously unseen synthetic content in any form to support any task through generative modeling. And this, um, this branch of uh, artificial intelligence is not new. It's, we, we, uh, we, we work in this, in this kind of artificial intelligence for many years. But the results were academic, or in, a, in lab, perhaps we see some kind of examples, amazing examples, but we saw them so far away from our lives. But after this date, at, after, or the beginning of December of 2022, we have this in all of our computers so far away from one click and express ourselves in the same way that we express with our colleagues. Behind that, we have another kind of technology. So briefly, I, do, I, I don't want to, to talk about, uh, about technical issues, but it's important to, to say that uh, behind of that, we have the lar large language models that are the models, uh, the statistical language, that are able to look for the next more suitable word to the previous one. And it's the magic that is behind the answers of this kind of tools. They don't uh, ra make rationing about what kind of uh, response uh, we have to do, or we have they to do. Uh, they only apply a kind of calculus just in order to say the next word or the most suitable word is, is that. And this, this has a, a, a very interesting application in natural language professions and so on in the chatbot and also when we use this chatbot in, because we, we have very powerful tools and we introduce in every place we have a very powerful tools in every domain. This is not new. The, the, this, uh, the, the, the large uh, language models started more or less at uh, 2019, evolving different technologies. But if we see the figure with the, uh, this, this kind of, of uh, language lang large models, and we see what happened after the 2022. We see an exploitation of this kind of, of tools. And we can, re can recognize the GPT because it's the most known, but it's not the only one. We have many, many, many uh, large language models. And as you can see in, in the beginning of 2023, the, we have Every day, different approaches of this of this uh, 
technology. Not only proprietary technologies are uh, belonging uh, companies uh, like OpenAI or Microsoft or something like that. Also uh, in the open community. That is so very powerful. And perhaps if we have an opportunity, especially in, 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 in universities, just in order to take the control and not depend on these, uh, these companies. And also, in we put the focus on the GPT or ChatGPT. ChatGPT is based on a uh, language large model that is GPT uh, th that started uh, the work in in this in this uh, in, in in this area in 2018, and we have different models and the model behind the first uh, the first ChatGPT is GPT three dot five that also had different approaches as in order to to train and also to, to have the, 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 the functionalities or the opportunity to, to, to give the answers. And right now we have it depends if you, is, you, you pay money or not, GPT three dot five or GPT four behind chat GPT. Mm. And there are many challenges behind this uh, this uh, this model because are powerful course, but scaling up and uh, maintaining this, uh, this language are difficult, are very expensive. Then uh, we can link this with the, the ethical issues of, of, the, of the artificial intelligence because we have a lot of resource, resources just in order to have that. Then creating these uh, models requires months of training and a lot of financial invest. When who can uh, support that, and also, and perhaps, one of the uh, most uh, interesting topic to discuss is what happens uh, with the data that they requ require to, to be trained, because if I have a very large uh, and powerful uh, language model, I need a lot of data just in order to to have a, a real, a real application, uh, just in order to, to have this this kind of uh, of answers. Then, where are the data? What kind of data? We have bias. We have no bias. Then, because these these machi these machines are not in so intelligent yet to say this data is bad or not. They use the data, and the patterns that we find or they find in the in the data are in the, in the answers that we can give to the users. It's not just GPT, it's not ja just chat GPT. We have every day new uh, smart applications in every domain, communication, education, health, business, uh, content creation, then you can go to, do, for example, this kind of repositories, Futurepedia or all things AI, and you can see uh, and browse uh, and search a lot of applications that have behind the, the engine of this new kind of uh, generative artificial intelligence. But uh, every time that in technology, we have uh, the uh, disruptive technology. Uh, we have a reaction, usually a reaction that is uh, or can classify in the streams. We have technophile stream, a uh, technophobe discourses or positions. Then these streams are both bad because. Uh, the technology, the, any technology is not good enough for without any kind of risk or any kind of or payment that you have to that, and it's not so bad. Just in order to say this is like uh, the, the the final of the world that we we we, we live in as Terminator field. Then these uh, streams uh, are uh, can be found in the in the answers or in the positions of many, many, many important uh, people. For example, uh, Chomsky. Chomsky is uh, a very important uh, 
researcher in, in the area of, of the creation of, of artificial language and, and say that generative art, uh, artificial intelligence undermine our scientific, uh, scientific pursuit and comprise our moral principles by integrating a fundamentally erroneous understanding of language and knowledge. This is so hard. This is everyone is very happy with your with the new toy, and this person says this is like a disaster. For example, Lee say that more than reject, we have to, to learn of this opportunity. Yes, because we have applications that are made by you humans that reproduce the, the human pattern. Or, for example, Bill Gates. Bill Gates uh, said that this kind of artificial intelligence in general, but taking in mind that uh, this, uh, this expression was related with the, uh, the appearance of ChatGPT, is that uh, this, uh, this artificial intelligence is, uh, is causing one of the most important disruptive moments in technology, comparable like internet, mobile phones, or the personal computers. And uh, he put the focus on the one of the another one of the ethical issues, or most important ethical issues that we had to take in, 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 into account. That if we have right now a digital uh, divide uh, between the people that had access to the technology and people that had not access to the technology, this gap will be grow or, or can uh, uh, can, uh, can uh, grow if. We, we have persons that have access to the artificial intelligence new applications and others that don't have no access to the, this kind of, uh, of the powerful applications. Then it seems so important to, to take into, into account to, to do that. In education, well, in educa the, the, the arrival of generative artificial intelligence in, uh, was uh, like, um, uh, her query uh, for educators, and so quickly, I think in the in the in the first weeks of, of, of the appearance of this ChatGPT application, we we can read in in the newspapers uh, uh, all around the world uh, people talking about the opportunities and people talking about the disasters about uh, this this application in specifically educational uh, area. And uh, one of the mm, comparisons that uh, we received was uh, so uh, similar uh, with the appearance of the calculator uh, in, the, in the 60s. Um, because you can see in this, uh, in this uh, figure, uh, in this picture, like a uh, math teacher protests against calculated use in the classroom and it, it was the same. Many people say it's impossible. We have to forbid. Uh, we have to uh, uh, forbidden this uh, this uh, this kind of technology in our, in our classroom because the students uh, are not uh, are not work anymore to in, in the in their uh, issues. Then the the the, the history repeats again, but uh, if we thought in the, uh, or we think the, in, in the calculator, I think, uh, or uh, we can uh, be agree with me, that the calculator is in every place, and no one uh, uh, don't know how to say, to make a zoom or, or, or something, another uh, typical uh, arithmetic calculator. No? Then what's happened when you have a, a very powerful uh, technology that has a very important impact in the in the workplace or in the society in the social in the society, also this 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 change have to be uh, uh, present, be present in the classrooms because we have to change our uh, the way we teach or the the, the, the topics we teach because the evolution of the knowledge is, is here. Then, uh, as I talk about 
all these reactions uh, can be uh, put uh, in, the in, the, in the streams, but the, the idea is trying to avoid these uh, streams about the naive technophiles and the calcitrans technophobe. What's happened in, with the application of artificial intelligence in, in education? Uh, we have three directions of the, uh, to apply uh, artificial intelligence in, in, in education. The idea of learning from artificial intelligence, that is the idea of having more powerful or, uh, tools that are used in, in teaching and learning, like uh, intelligent tutors or uh, personalized learning. Learning about artificial intelligence, this is related with the skills uh, uh, and competencies of, of the citizens or the future, the future citizens that uh, are not enough just in order to say that uh, they know what is uh, the digital context. They know, they need to know uh, how they are, uh, what is the basis behind artificial intelligence. And also learning with artificial intelligence that is related with uh, the idea of using artificial intelligence just in order to know, to predict what's happening in the, in the learning spaces. It's more or less uh, related with the learning analytics uh, approach that, that we have. Then, we've, in, during many, many years, we have different uh, approaches or different examples of intelligent tutor system, in learning analytics application, uh, personalized or adaptive learning application, robotics, intelligent environments, and educational content generation. But as I said in, the, in my first slide, this is, uh, okay, this is it, but it's so far away from me because I, I don't see or no, I don't feel this in my, in, in my daily day. But with the appearance of this new kind of uh, tools in every domain, in every, in every level, educational level, so quickly the students and people adopt this kind of, of uh, technology. I, I remember if we talk uh, that uh, this ChatGPT appeared in at the at the end of November 2022. I remember uh, to her to my to my daughter to talk about uh, ChatGPT in um, January 2023. One month, and talk about not because she. Uh, read something, no, she talked because she and, his, and her colleagues use that to do the, the or in their learning uh, environment. Then the, the, the adoption of this kind of technologies is so, so, so quick. Then we have to reflect that because if we hide in our head is not, it's not a good idea. Then we have to reflect the role of education in preparing people for changing the world uh, in, to interact with this kind of uh, technologies, reflect on how these applications have influenced uh, in the teaching, learning, and assessment uh, processes, and reflect uh, on the new uh, skills, knowledge, uh, competencies, values for life and work in, the, in this new age of the artificial intelligence. Then uh, uh, we have many, many opportunities and also benefits of this generative uh, artificial in education. We can access to a large amount of information. We can generate an extensive set of educational content. We have uh, supporting tools for learning new concepts and com uh, compared to the traditional media, including abilities to summarize and explain complex concepts. We, ha we have uh, the capability to interact or establish dialogues with these, with these tools. We can 
uh, we, we had the opportunity to enhance the critical thinking and the creativity using these 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 tools. We can uh, avoid uh, the repetitive touch, uh, allowing putting the focus on the more intellectual or important task. We can uh, de develop uh, ideas. Uh, we can go uh, further to the personalized learning. We can help students with the writing difficulties skills. Uh, we can create new powerful virtual learning assist uh, assistants. Uh, we have tools that can in be introduced in our personal learning environment just in order to improve or to enhance the, the informal learning. Uh, we can uh, if, uh, improve our lingu language skills. We can uh, support uh, assessment in another innovative way. But also we have reads. All of the opportunities have the other face. Rapid and superficial learning, higher students uh, from develop, develop, uh, developing critical and dependent thinking skills, or uh, a lack of creativity, uh, providing incomplete information, uh, offering uh, fabricated results that are uh, uh, hallucinations, uh, uh, losing the, the authorships. Uh, possible uh, uh, adverse effects about developing inter interpersonal skills because I can I, I can only dialogue with uh, with machines you know with humans uh, dishonest of use of this tool just in order to to generate generate uh, content that are I, I don't understand it at all uh, different access are, and use of these tools uh, depending on the, the resources or the opportunities they have. The, uh, the invasion of data, data privacy, the increase in, in racial socioeconomic uh, produced by the vias, or potential uh, negative environmental impact because the, this, this kind of, of um, tools needs a lot of uh, calculus power. Opportunities, reads, are related with the challenge. We have new challenges in education, and perhaps this uh, this conference is one example uh, of the need uh, of to, to talk about this this challenge of, of a community, uh, especially in education. Then we have to adapt all the, the actors involved in this uh, digital ecosystem, just in order to to have. The, the, uh, the knowledge and uh, the understanding of these uh, artificial intelligence concepts, then we have to train teachers, we have to train students, just in order to be able to, to use this, uh, this, this kind of tools efficiently. We need new communities of practice just in order to help each other to, to, to grow uh, and to, to, to work this uh, amazing, but dark, uh, that uh, work. Uh, we have perhaps to review and update our curriculums because we need to, to change some, uh, something that are obsolete by the, the new technology. We have to explore about what happened with assessment because our kind uh, to make assessment is not the, the best one. The, this is not a, a issue uh, related with artificial intelligence. When we, uh, when we were in the pandemic, we see what happened with the, the, our assessment methods. And we need to develop ethical codes just in order to advance in this, in, in this, in this uh, road. Then the question should, be, should not be how to prevent students from cheating us by using these uh, tools. Uh, the, the real question is how we should use them in education, learning, but 
you can put in in other domains because it's not a, a, a problem only in the education and communication. Then we have a plethora of new scenarios. Uh, we can introduce or one use these these uh, these technologies. We have possibility in giants to to put uh, to have alternatives of uh, ideas. We have to use the Socratic component just in order to to make di dialogues, uh, just in order to to go deeper in our uh, top in, in our topics. Uh, we have to use in a, uh, as a collaborat collaboration coach in in, in, a, in a teamwork for a, for a teacher uh, guide on the side. The, the teachers can use uh, this kind of uh, tools just in order to have more content, more samples, more 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 personal tutors, co-designer, te a teacher that can use this kind of uh, tool just in order to to define new curriculum, new, new syllabus, something like that. Exploratorium, the teacher can explore more uh, more contents or, or the uh, different perspective of a topic, especially from uh, when the new version of this kind of tools appears and can are not based only on the past knowledge, uh, uh, because right now this kind of, of tools can also uh, explore the the web on real time. Then to have an, an, a, a very powerful uh, tool for, explora for, for exploration. A study body, uh, like a, a, an assistant for the students, a motivator, you can uh, have a, like a, a personal coach, or dynamic assessor. Uh, these are some examples of new scenarios that appear in real uh, educational uh, context just in order to use this kind of tools, not only ChatGPT, all these generative tools in education. Just in order to close some uh, quick reflections, and just in order to, to, to give the opportunity to, to uh, discuss uh, or to make questions. Uh, the first reflection is uh, we have an extensive, uh, widespread use of this artificial intelligence application that represents a need to consider an ethical artificial intelligence and or explainable artificial intelligence. We need transparency. We need ethical base in, the, in this kind of tools. Generative artificial intelligence perhaps uh, can be unsettling, in, in some uh, case frightening, and right now has strengths and limitations. But it's very important that we have or to take in mind that this kind of tools improve or will be improved so quickly. Perhaps uh, some kind of issues or um, drawbacks that were defined or were presented in the first months of these tools right now are completely uh, overwhelming. And then this, this kind uh, of applications evolve so quickly. Then the, the problems of today are solved tomorrow. Forbidden, uh, deny, prohibit, this kind of tools is not a solution. We have to accept that this kind of tools are in use in every place. We have to adopt it. Only to say this is forbidden is not a, the, the, the right solution. No. Artificial intelligence applied in, in education are going to contribute towards the digital disruption of the educational system and is uh, so related with the digital transformation of the, of the educational institution and also society. Then the digital transformation strategies of the, of the universities need uh, to introduce, to incorporate the artificial intelligence issues 
Otherwise, this kind of strategies uh, will be more uh, obsolete. Then it's an, a, a new uh, challenge for the governance of the, of the universities. And we need to train both teachers and students for the proper use of the artificial intelligence. Teachers, just in order to know the limits, uh, the opportunities, and the students, just in order to say this is not uh, like a wizard that he, uh, knows everything. And every answer of this kind of tool is the, the truth, no, because perhaps you receive answers that are not true at, at all. And for many students, they don't uh, understand that the answer that is perfectly expressed in Spanish, English, or whatever language is, 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 is not true. Then it's very, so it's very important to teach uh, or to train both teachers and students. And also to create this kind of uh, uh, communities. It's an example uh, that is in the in a university of UK that uh, you can find uh, a, a collection, more than 100 uh, uh, ideas of using this kind of tools in the, in the teaching and learning processes. Uh, many problems that uh, appear or put uh, in our tables, are put in our tables uh, right now because uh, we have new tools like ChatGPT are not uh, because we have these this artificial intelligent tools. The problems exist before. But this kind of, of tools uh, have the effect uh, to magnify this, this problem. But the problem exists. The assessment pro issues are not new. The cheating of the students are not new. Then, but we have a very powerful tool that uh, make bigger these, these, these issues. This uh, kind of tool can uh, make amazing things, but we have to take in mind also that these kind of tools are just in their infancy. I said at the beginning that one year ago, we have no idea of we, what we have now on our computers, less than one year ago. Uh, we are in September, then the baby half nine months, and the baby grows and evolves a lot of in this 10 months. What happened in this year? I don't know. But amazing things, surely. And this is the, my final reflection. We have very powerful tools to create content that uh, they are able to, to create content in this thing from human production and able to interact with users using uh, natural language and it's a disruption. But we have to face this, this future and this future with this foundation is not only in the hands of the engineers, is not only in the hands of the technician. We need to work together all the disciplines, just in order to, like with uh, inter intra disciplinary co creation, ensure the ethical, safe, and inclusive development of this technology. Thank you so much, and I hope to be in time. Yeah, th thank you so much. <laughs>
students who couldn't afford their own computers, now every student has that in the, in the public schools in the, in, in the United States. Do you foresee this sort of artificial intelligence opportunity and education for teachers and students going through this same sort of evolution of a, I don't know, socioeconomic development for the future of our students? Yes, I, I think, I think, I not only the, the, the think that, uh, I think, uh, I, I put the, the words of Bill Gates because um, uh, he was very afraid of, of that the, because right now we have a very important digital divide between the person that have access or not access to the basic technology, like a laptop, as, as, as you say. Because perhaps we have uh, uh, schools or countries that uh, have the opportunity to, to, to give access to the technology to every student. But right now we have uh, countries, zones, regions that are not able to have access to a computer or access to internet. We, are, we have no a, a solution for that, and we have here a more powerful, a more uh, weakly uh, growing technology that is, uh, that is artificial intelligence. Then if we have not uh, to have an agreement just in order to, to share these uh, improvements to everyone, we have another very, very, very important digital divide in, not in the future right now. And it's, it's, a, it's a stupid example, but I think it, it, we, we have to take in mind that just in order to uh, try to, to, to put this in, a, in, a, in another context. For example, if you have the opportunity to, to use a, a free tool like ChatGPT and uh, make your uh, word uh, uh, at home with this kind of assistant, uh, but you just use the free, you have less opportunities to have or to do a, a, a good job if your partner had the opportunity to pay for the advanced version. And both students have the opportunity to, to, to have access. Imagine the people that have no access to the, bas the basic one. And here we have a very important issue because, for example, if I in a, a, I a private uh, institution and uh, I, I give to my students the the pay version of this just in order to make the the or use in the, in the learning, we we are we are creating a very important div uh, digital divide with other that have an access at least the the, the premium version. Imagine that in countries or region that has no uh, access to any kind of technology. It's very complicated and it's amazing and ethical uh, uh, issue, a pro problem issue that we have to face. Okay, do we have another question? Uh, thank you for the presentation. I'm Jesse de Koker from the Tilburg uh, University of Applied Sciences in the Netherlands. Um, from your experience and the example you gave from your daughter's experience in education, how do you reflect on the fast adoption of generative artificial intelligence apps at ChatGPT in education? Yes, it's like it, it, it was a... Uh, um, a real example of, of that, not a, an academic uh, uh, approach. When you see your, your, your daughter or your, your, your child, uh, your son, using these, uh, these uh, tools by, the, by themselves you know, without uh, any kind of intervention of, in this case, uh, their father, they say, yeah, this, this is a very interesting, uh, and try that. No. They discovered by, by, by themselves. My, my daughter was in the, in the secondary school and my, my son in the university, two different contexts. And 
I, I, I learned uh, too much about uh, see, uh, uh, seeing them how to interact with this, this uh, technology. First, they adopt so quickly. Uh, they, they learn or they know that this kind of uh, new tools are, uh, are able to, to be used. And how to that? Uh, for example, I, 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 I hear my, my daughter talk with, uh, with other colleagues just in order to use that to prepare some kind of uh, uh, word report to for, for a subject, like a history subject. But also, I, I saw to my, to my son to, to how to use that just in order to, to have uh, an assistant just in order to make a test, an assessment test, an informal assessment test that uh, could be used uh, with any kind of uh, uh, support, books, uh, and use this, this kind of, of tools. And I was very surprised because uh, he studied for the, for, the, for the test. One question, uh, he, knows the, he, he knew the, the, the answer, but asked to the ChatGPT the, the solution. And as the and ChatGPT said, another, said another. Then he decided to use the ChatGPT against their own knowledge because ChatGPT is ChatGPT. And the result was this answer was uh, was not correct. And is the, the way this, uh, I said that it's so important to express or to, 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 to train the students, the art students to say what happens when you ask ChatGPT? when you can ask and when you can support them, or when you perhaps receive something that is not true. Because for them, what the, the answer of these tools are the, the, the best, are the truth. Not the, the, the book is not okay because they, they don't read books. The, the teacher, it doesn't matter because they don't listen to the teacher, but see, they see what appears in the, in the screen. And it's based on ChatGPT. ChatGPT is the is the is the most is the, the best. Then it's all true. Then it's so important just in order to explain then that you can use that, but in this scenario that they explained before, not that not not like the wizard of the knowledge. Thank you. I think I think that you have time for one more question. So uh, I've got a question. Uh, it's about authorship. You know, uh, one of the challenges of uh, understanding the implications of chat, B, uh, chat GPT, but uh, this generative AI in particular, is authorship in a in a traditional sense. So let's say, write me a book in the style of Stephen King, right? Um, and so, how do you recognise authorship? Uh, in um, this sense, but also how do you recognize authorship in a co-productive way? You are training the machine. Uh, and I ask this question with the understanding that Chat GPT may be free, but it's owned by a commercial enterprise that seeks to profit from Chat GPT. So I just uh, wondered if you wanted to talk a bit about those issues. I think it's one of the, the risks, the, the authorships and, and the, the, the ethical use of that. Because I, I, I think in the, in the authorship, in general, academic or non-academic authorship, we have a very thin line uh, that divide what is good and what is bad. Because if I say, I ask to ChatGPT, please give me this, uh, uh, give me a book or a novel about a thriller, a black thriller, and I use all these contents and put my name and say, this is mine, it's, it's not true. It's, a, it's a dishonest use of ChatGPT uh, or 
whatever uh, tool you use. But if I say, well, I had to, to, ri to write a, a, a new novel or a new article, and I have this idea. Uh, give me ideas of how to start. And I said, no, I, I don't like that. Oh, this is interesting. Please uh, explore this. This is like a, an assistant. But the, I, the, the ideas are mine. I'm, uh, I control the flow. Then the, the final writing is mine. Then is the same tool, is the same context. The first is awful, and perhaps the, the, the result is not too much good. Uh, and the second, no, it's, it's, it's my, mm, I, I change my workflow. And artificial, and perhaps I write the, the, the novel or, or write the paper or write the, the, whatever I have to, to write uh, more efficiently. Uh, I, have, I, 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 I have more time to do other things. And because these kind of tools are here to support us in our daily days, in a daily uh, a use of daily work, then the, the, the good and the bad is so near. And, and for this reason, it's so important the ethical issues. And we have, in the, in the looking forward, or going forward to the uh, educational context, what happened with the students that use this in the bad way? But how a teacher can uh, know, can assess the, 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 the students that do with the, in the best way? Because the use of ChatGPT is not the reason to say this is bad, because you can use ChatGPT in order to say, to do good things. Perhaps we have to introduce something that perhaps some, some of us forget it, is we have to interact with the student just to say, just to say what is the, the knowledge behind? What is the, what, 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 what uh, was the idea? If you use ChatGPT, please uh, share with, with me the process. Because the final product, perhaps, is not the most important right now in, the, in, 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 the, in, in, the, in this context. Perhaps the most interesting is the process. How the, do they, uh, have you ask? How do you change or your ideas, evolve? Give me the, and it's easy. You can share the chat. And perhaps it, it could be another appendix of, uh, of the future wars introduced. If you use that, it doesn't matter. But because Right now, we have the idea that ChatGPT is an external tool. But at, the, at this moment, we can uh, find artificial intelligence in our work process, in our spread set, that are in, the, in this tool, and change and give you uh, uh, information about your style of writing, for example, I know English native, as you say, for my awful pronunciation. Uh, and I write in English, but I'm not an English native. And I receive the, the uh, uh, possible change. You can change this, this, this but the, 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 the sentence is mine. I only receive and a support for a tool. Then this will be the next uh, uh, challenge of the, uh, of the new kind of tools that we are going to see in our laptops right now. All, all the applications that we use in every domain are going to be improved with art artificial intelligence capabilities that are you going to have to create your uh, tests, or to change your images, or to, to change your videos, using amazing functionalities that right now 
we can do with a lot of work making or setting up a lot of parameters that with a click will be done. Then this is the, the new scenario. Thank you very much. I think it's time to the coffee break. And if, I don't know if someone has something to say. Two qu more questions? We have time for more? No? Uh, we can uh, do it in the coffee section. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so we can do it in the coffee. And the next session will be at 11, the talking circle in the room 008. Okay, thank you very much. Mm -hmm.